In the last video, uh, we finished up the valve body, and uh, next thing is we have we've already made the valve, um, but I want to make these piston rings next for the valve so it seals uh, better. So I just have a piece of scrap cast iron as piston rings should be made of cast iron or uh, I guess you can also go silicone for steam engines but I like cast iron so we're gonna face this off uh, so now we're gonna turn this down to size and this is just a quarter inch or uh, an inch and a quarter in diameter so this is a pretty simple turning operation see where we are three oh two what about down here three oh one so we got about fifty thou I'm gonna make it a little less than a quarter maybe a couple thou less than an inch and a quarter so let's go let's take forty We'll see where we're at after that. Okay. Three or two sixty two, and over here, two sixty one. So let's take. Uh, Let's take let's make this the final pass. We're gonna do that's ten and then twelve fourteen. Let's see where this gets us. Alright. Where did we end up? Two fifty nine. Two fifty nine. Or two forty nine rather, sorry, not fifty nine. Uh, hmm. Trying to think if I wanna go a little smaller than that. I think I do. I want to be able to have the the ring spring back a little bit and leave a teensy little gap. Well, hold on. Let's see. Oh, everything's all attached, but let's see how well it fits in this. It's a little tight. That's what size one I thought. Maybe we'll do a spring pass. Yeah, I'll feed in two. Okay. Now let's see. Two forty-seven and a half. 247 247 okay that should be good let's see how well it fits <clears throat> all 
That's perfect. Oh. Let's just uh, hit this with some with the file. So now, uh, this hole is from just a previous machining that I did on this. So, but we need to drill it all the way. Right now it's just a blind hole. Get all these chips off the lathe. Uh, so we're going to do that next, and then after we do that, we're going to bore it to size, and then we're going to start parting off rings. Alright, I got a little mark on here of how far I need to go, approximately. Okay, we've graduated to the boring bar. Right. I changed my boring bar because the other one tends to rub. So let's just take a measurement here. Let's do that again. Nine forty seven and a half. So we're looking to make this about nine ninety five. So that means we got about forty five thousandths more. All right, let's see. The work is a bit hot. Nine. 78. So we've got 17,000 take off. Yep. Okay. That should be it. This should be. Yeah. So now we're going to start parting these off. Alright, so I got a sixteenth parting tool in there, which is gonna touch off on the work. And I'm gonna move over, I'm gonna put my indicator in my carriage. I'm gonna move over 62.5 thousandths. Huh, actually, I think this isn't this is an eighth. This is 90,000 sticks, so that was the 16th, but let's go in at 90,000. There we go. That puts us this edge of the tool on this edge of the work. Sorry, it's hard to see. I left my little magnetic camera mount uh, somewhere. It's not here. <laughs> so next... We are going to go over, well, let's see, we need to go over the thickness of one of these rings. Which I believe this is a sixteenth. Yeah. These are all sixteenth. So, we're going to go over a little less. We're going to go over sixty thousand. Now we're going to lock the carriage. And now, this might be too fast. Yeah. Let's uh, slow that down a bit. There we go. We got a, a big nasty burr on that. So let's take that off and uh, we'll put a we'll break it. Alright, so if you remember back to my uh, other video where I made the piston rings for the cylinder piston, we need to break this. 
So let's see here. I'm gonna put it in like that. So I, I go in more detail on this process, but we're gonna break this with a hammer because it's a lot more controlled. There we go. Very, see that? So now, let's go to the other vise. Alright, so recall the way we're going to do this is we're going to put this up on the screwdriver. And the logic behind this is that the screwdriver causes the ring to be gapped. Now we're going to heat this up with a torch until it either falls down or we're going to push it down when it's, when it's red hot and it's going to quench in that water. Now last time I didn't have an oxyacetylene torch so we're going to see how much better this works. Much better. Now we got a gap. Alright, now comes the hard part where you have to do this without breaking the ring. And this is going to be difficult because this is a thick, small ring. So you're going to see it on camera when I probably break this oh man damn yep that's what happens I may have to make them thinner because uh... they're just not flexible enough the way they are so and here that actually fits super super snug but we actually want a little bit of clearance in there for when they expand so let me make another one and it'll it'll be much thinner than this alright let's try this again this one's half the size so now there's some up and down wiggle room so oh man this one's gonna break too Damn. It has to be uh it needs to be thinner, I th I believe. Which will just introduce more play, but it's just because it's it's too thick, it won't spin back. Okay, take three. It's a little uh thinner in that direction, radially. This is why you make a whole damn. This is why you make a whole bunch of extras. See, I need to be able to pull it over. Okay, guys, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. This one seems springy enough. Come on, baby. Let's do the. Damn it. That one could have worked, but I did it wrong. <laughs> okay, what is this? Take five. Let's see. Yes! Yes! Man, 
That was an ordeal. Alright, we'll do the other three off camera. Hopefully I have enough stock left. Jeez. Alright guys, after ugh, at least this many broken piston rings, can you see that? Yeah, after at least that many, uh, I finally got it to where the piston rings are good. They fit in there. I was having a lot of trouble with them being bound, binding up in the bore. And the one thing I found is uh, it, it really helped when I actually machined the outer diameter of the rings to be less than the bore diameter by almost ten thousandths. Uh, that really helped in stopping it from binding up because it was just, I think it was just too tight of a fit. And I think there's uh, something in the, maybe the inner diameter was off a little bit so it had room to like twist to the side or, or something. All I know is that doing that fixed it a lot. I also noticed that, you know, the amount of spring back you have is important for a lot of different reasons. Um, that puts more force on the walls, which makes it harder to, to glide back and forth. And also, um, the spring back is directly proportional to how far you can bend it apart to get into the piston ring grooves. Um, and, so you gotta experiment with that. It took me a really long time. And you have to you have to have the technique down too. The best thing I found to do was to get one end in the groove and then slowly walk around the cir the circumference, pushing the the ring in the groove and then pushing the other sides of the ring down. And it's kinda hard to explain, but I have four piston rings on this and this, I think, is about 15 PSI. There's no gasket, so there's a whole bunch of air escaping from this interface. But if we look, so. So it works. I'm very excited about that. Um, this whole system works, and uh, that's that's awesome. Now the the thing is that the one thing you may have noticed is that the upstroke is a little weaker than the downstroke, and that's because um, this diameter of the piston rod um, that decreases the effective area of the piston because the force on the piston is proportional to the area exposed to the steam. And if you got a piston rod in the middle, you are effectively subtracting area away, and. Uh, so yeah, I could have I could have made this smaller. Um, although it seems very proportional, I might have, I could have made it maybe five eighths. It probably would have been okay. Yeah, I would have gotten more power, and and it's a squared relationship too. So going from three quarter to five eighths is actually would give you a decent amount of power. Um, it's and it's a little late to go there now because I'd have to redo these two parts because the the rod goes through it, but. Uh, this is these are lessons to be learned for steam engine version two <laughs> coming out in ten to twenty years. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Um, this the whole top end is almost done. The only thing we need to do is we need to make the two cylinder heads that go on these guys right here, and then um, the whole top end will be done. It'll be complete. We simply do, I'm going to make all the gaskets and stuff afterwards when the whole engine's done. But, uh, yeah, so that that's going to be the next step, and that'll finish off the top end. And that, that's a pretty big milestone for me in terms of uh, getting this thing completed. So uh, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along for this ride. Uh, I will see you in the next one when we make either the cylinder heads or we could make the crosshead guide next. That would be a nice, big, fun casting to do. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.